You're listening to the Fooled by the Root podcast. Hello, everyone. This is your host, Heidi Marble. I am so thrilled to be here with two amazing women. My co-host today is Amy Hansen. She was actually interviewed by Pulled by the Root. Her episode is number 65. If you haven't listened to it, please do. And then we have Lindsay. Lindsay is going to be anonymous today. She is a biological mother who relinquished her daughter. She sent in a submission that was very powerful. And I would like to read some of that. <clears throat> Your first sentence, Lindsay, is this. I am a mom who wasn't allowed to raise her daughter. Wow. I mean, full stop right there. And then you go on to speak about a podcast that you heard Ashley on our, on our podcast. You also decided to write a letter to an editor about the current circumstances in our country in regards to mothers and separation. And so I'd like to read that. Dear editors, currently there is a national discussion regarding the trauma caused by separation of children from their mothers at our southern border. Numerous organizations such as the American Bar Association, ABA, CNN, CNBC, Frontline, New York Times, and NPR. Society views the effects of my daughter and my separation differently than they view the separation at the border. There are reports that have been suggested of providing more than $400,000 in compensation for each individual separated. This is in direct contrast to the assistance I was offered by the agency that facilitated my daughter's adoption. When I finally sought emotional support for our separation, the agency informed me that I was eligible for one free phone counseling session. We all know that there are long-term consequences of removing puppies or kittens from their mothers before they are weaned. As adult animals, these puppies and kittens often display behavior issues such as fearfulness, skittishness, aggression, anxiousness. So why do we as people think removing children from their mothers would not have the same long-term effects? It does not matter if the separation of mother and child was at gunpoint caused by a mother's death or by manipulation and control of the mother, the trauma is the same. The time is long overdue for society to have an honest discussion on the effects of adoption. So beautifully said, Lindsay. Thank you, thank you. You know, it was, um, the letter, it, it really, the timing was unbelievable, right? It was, I wrote it last November um, in the middle of, you know, adoption month where we're supposed to be all so happy that that there's this option of adoption. Um, and at the same time, um, there was the, the um, issues at the Southern border uh, and they, they just were in direct conflict with one another, but nobody, nobody looks at it that way. I once said to a friend, and you know, if this person hears this, I want you to know that I know you love and support me. Okay, I, I, this was, but, but when I made this comparison, um, the, there was, well, one is separation and one is substitution. It's okay because the adoption, they were just, you, you, there was just a substitution. The border is bad because that's separation, right? And, and again, I, I know that, that the person, all she wants to do is support me, right? I mean, I, you know, and, and so I, I if she, because I'm, um, you know, other people are going to hear this, right? And I'll pass it around. But so, I, so I don't want her to feel like she said something. But, but that's society's view, right? That was that's society's viewpoint. Society's viewpoint is that, um, well, we're going to give you a substitute, and we'll be all fine because it's just a substitute. Yeah. Powerful point, Lindsay. Um, you know, I think it would be really important for us as we do on the podcast to go to go back in time and we thank you in advance for being willing to go through that emotional pain. Can you tell us about the experience of relinquishing your daughter? What was happening in your life? What, what would you like to tell the audience so they understand the core of what's happened to you? Um, so in 1976, I was, I had just turned 15 and one Saturday morning at at 3.26 uh, in the morning, I gave birth to my daughter who was 
We're here for you. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Just okay. give me one second, right? Give me one second. I, 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 I thought that I was ready for this, but you know, I, it's, it's okay. okay. <laughs> Not as much as I thought I was, right? But, no, it's okay. Yeah. No, you take all the you take all the time you need. It's it's such a painful thing, and I appreciate you being willing to talk about it because yeah. I feel yeah, like so. there's such a transactional feeling yeah. to this, and that well, we forget yeah. that there are real yeah. people going yeah. through real tragedy. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so let me let me start again. Okay, so so Saturday morning at um, three twenty eight in the morning, I gave birth to my to my daughter who was seven and a half pounds and and nineteen inches long. Um, I I was in a um, a hospital on Long Island. Um, I was fifteen. There was no prenatal. Not, not, not that there was no prenatal care, but there was no, there was no preparation, right? There was no preparation for what labor was going to be like. So I'm, I'm 15. I'm wheeled off to the hospital. I am on a gurney in the hall at 15. Um, I am taken off the maternity ward. Um, so I was taken off the, the hall. Um, I went to try to see my daughter and I was told, no, you can't, you can't see her. You know, so I, you know, self back to my room. Um, my father, my father came and, and expedited, right? The situation and, and I could see her. I, so I saw her twice through the glass and never held her. But I, yeah. I saw her at, at, at least twice. And when I saw her, I saw her, right? And and she was she had a big head of 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 hair and, and it was and it was black, it wasn't my hair, right? Her face was her face was my face. And I carried that picture of her with me forever. At one time I had asked if I could get a picture. And I was told I no, I, I couldn't have a picture. So I carried that picture of her with me until now. You know, um, yeah. The other stuff. I, I mean, it's all. You know, I, I, I was, I was sent away, right? I was. Uh, you know, I didn't go to. Um, you know, I, I didn't go to the hotel. I went to a home, <laughs> right? Right. So, so I, I, so I, so I went to an individual home. This was in 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 1975, 76. So it was just actually at the end of the baby scoop era, uh, abortion became legal. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, ironically, my parents wanted me to have an abortion, but at 14, I knew my daughter was supposed to exist. How? I knew she was supposed to exist. My daughter was supposed to exist. And she, and she does. And, and I, we are in reunion, kind of walk around that a little bit. And she's amazing. Thank you so much. I know that was so hard, Lindsay. And yes. our hearts ache with you for that pain. Before we leave that, that segment of your life, what would have made the difference for you? What did you need that you did not get? I needed somebody to say, you have a place to come home to. Uh, mm -hmm. I, was, I was told you're not bringing a baby home. And at 15 in 1976, what do I do? I, I could not have an abortion. That was within my control. Within my control was I could have my daughter, but it was not within my control to, to provide her with anything. I, 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 I had no resources, right? I didn't have a place to go. And at the same time, I was being told that she was going to get everything that I didn't have. She was going to have two parents that loved her, who were able to provide for her, who would give her stability. Again, you know, my story isn't different than anybody else's story, but every story is 
different, every story is different in itself, right? But, but there are a lot of commonalities. You're not 14 and pregnant because everything is fine at home. I wanted to give her everything. And, and I was told this is the way you can do it. So I like to say it was both manipulation and control. Mm-hmm. You know, if it, if it was just one over the other, eventually I would have seen the light, right? If it was just control, then as soon as I was capable, I would have fought back. If it was just manipulation, then I would have eventually taken control of the situation. But it was the two of them together that, well, I can't bring her home. I don't have any control there. And you're doing the right thing. And if I went to search, then then I would be disrupting her life and and I would be selfish it would be only for my need and not for her need so my daughter asked me she goes why don't you ever look for me and and how do you say it's because I didn't want to I didn't I didn't want to disturb your life Uh, I was I was told and I believed it. And, and I'm an educated woman now, right? I'm an, you know, when I believed it, you know, up, up until five years ago, I, I believed that if I searched, I would be destroying her life. And why would she want me anyhow? Right? Why, why, would she, why would she want me? Why would she want me? You know what? Why would she want me? It's just so important, Amy. I don't know how you're feeling about this, but as an adopted person, knowing that the person that relinquished you, that it wasn't just no big deal. It means everything to us to feel worth and value and to understand the circumstances that created this mess of trauma. And, And that's really what it is because... You know, um, I had a lot of resentment toward my my biological mother. I didn't even know her. I'm like, well, how could you just discard me? But when I found out her truth and what she went through, it changed my heart. And I think that's why listening to this part of it is so important um, for people. Amy, what are you thinking? Yeah, um, Lindsay, when you talk about... um not disrupting your daughter's life. And I think as an adoptee, what would it have meant to me? I don't know. I mean, cause I've only in reunion for five years now to have, you know, someone from like my birth mom reach out for me. Like that would have been an amazing, overwhelmingly accepted thing. Like, you know, when I did finally get into reunion, it was just something that I never imagined in my life that would ever happen. And just to hear you, how much you, you wanted to, you, but you were told just like my birth mother was told, you can't disrupt their lives. Like you're doing the best thing for your child. Like this is what you have to do. Um, but it, it warms my heart and it, it just, to hear that from a birth mom, I think helps adoptees just understand the complexity of what you went through. Can I um, kind of change gears just yes. a, a little bit? Yeah. And I, I want to talk a little bit about language, right? Mm-hmm. And and our use of language. And and um, I made my top 10 list. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> I'm Should just, I, I mean, make notes? <laughs> Are we in trouble? No, we say wrong. <laughs> there will be a quiz on Friday. <laughs> oh God! Okay. And one of the one of the things. Um, so 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 two things here. Um, first, I never left my daughter. Mm. I never left my daughter. I never left her I never didn't want her not one day I never gave her away I never gave her away and in the last little bit I'm beginning to resent the word relinquish because 
relinquish implies consent. And that is against the narrative that society has out there, right? Right? That, you know, that that these women didn't want their children. It it's a lie. I I never left her. I always wanted her. Um I I wasn't allowed. So yes. so, you know, was it relinquished or was it taken, stolen? Um, you know, uh, there are some people who will even use the, you know, the kidnap word. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not quite there um, because um, for me, kidnap implies that somebody's going to ransom, right? Somebody's like, if you get kidnapped, that there was no ransom back, right? That they were, they were taken and they were stolen. And so, so they, they weren't there. Um, and the other, um, the other thing that comes to language is, and, and, you know, I, I understand people's sensitivities and 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 whatnot, but I'm my daughter's mother. Plain and simple, I am my daughter's mother. Now, if you have to put an adjective in front of my name, uh, in front of the title for for clarity, mm -hmm. right? All right, um, I'm her first mother. Oh, I like that. And therein lies the challenge for, for us out here in adopting yeah. land. It's trying to find the right language. And I appreciate yeah. you bringing that up and letting us know mm -hmm. the importance of it. Yeah. And that different people have a different feeling right. about what it all means. And we continue right. to learn. Right, right. And, and, and I'm not offended by anything, right? I, I'm not offended by, you know, as long as you don't call me an asshole. I, you know, I don't, I'm not offended. By, by, <laughs> by, you can you can bleep that out too, right? Right. I'm, yes. I'm not, uh, yeah, I'm not offended by by what what you call me, but my core, mm. my core is, I am my daughter's mother. Yes. Right. When my husband, when I married my husband, he was a widower. What do we call his wife before me? We don't say his ex-wife. We don't say his fault. We call him his first wife. Right. So, so you know, and 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 just you know, I emailed you this. Um, mm -hmm. I'm the only one who gave birth. Yes. I'm I'm the only one who has a legitimate role. Everybody else's role had. They all have a role because of what I did. The reason there is an adoptive mother is because I had a child <laughs> and, she, and she, you know what I mean? Um, I, I am the one who has the DNA connection, right? Again, she carries my DNA and, and science now tells us that I carry her DNA, right? They, they've done those studies they, they, that, that I carry my daughter. Literally, people used to say that kind of like, Oh, I carry you in my heart. Well, they're right. <laughs> you, you really do. You really do carry him in. Her DNA is in my system. I, again, we, this is on my top 10 list, right? And we put, I know my daughter. I don't know when she got her first car. I don't know when she got her first kiss, though I, I, I know a little bit. I haven't had all those shared experiences with her. Mm -hmm. but I know her mm -hmm. and 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 it, it kind of like and, and I only have moments of lucidity when we when when we close when we hit end here I, I'm going to be blubbering on the floor right you know you know I don't it's like it's moments of clarity right it's moment of clarity um but but so I I hear and I I try I try not to go on too many of 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 the of the Facebook like plates because it kind of makes me angry because I hear I hear women say oh, I don't know who you know, I don't know my son or I don't know my daughter you know you know them you don't have you, you, you don't know information I don't know information but I know my daughter it's so powerful Lindsay thank you for sharing all of that and speaking of your daughter mm -hmm. as we move through the interview. I would love for you, if you're willing to talk to us about 
how you were reunited with her. Right. Um, I, was, yeah. I, I do want to be careful, right? Because I don't, I, you know, I, I, I don't want to, you know, I want to be respectful for my daughter, right? Of course. Um, but um, I do enjoy telling the story. So I will say, before we say the story, I, I think I got a, I think I got a beautiful, you know, I, 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 I like the way it happened, right? I like the way it unfolded. Um, but I want to be clear, the only time a mother is supposed to meet her child is in the hospital when they bring her home. That's when a mother is supposed to be reunited with their daughter or with their child. It's when they're leaving the hospital. But, but that being said, I get this request to accept somebody as a friend on Facebook. Like two days before that, I accepted somebody that wasn't real. Right. So, so I, so I get this friend request and I'm like, I don't know who this person is. I don't pay any attention to it. Uh, kind of like the next day, um, I get, uh, an, an email, right? Actually there's like the, the, the two, uh, anyway, it, it doesn't matter exactly if it was one day or two days, but it was a, it was a span of four days, but then I get this, um, email that says, I sent you a friend request. Did you see it? And you know, I wasn't a big Facebook kind of person. And and um, uh, apparently, in between there, she also uh, messaged me on on Facebook Messenger. But I hadn't turned on Facebook Messenger, so so I didn't get it. Um, so I I work at college, right? And and the semester's over, and I'm cleaning up my office. Uh, why I'm in my office? Uh, who the heck knows, right? Um, uh, and I get a phone call, and the phone call says, um, hello, I'm, I'm just checking to see if I have the correct address for you. And I said, uh, what is this about? And, and, she, and she said, um, it's personal. And, and I said, uh, you're being kind of cryptic. <laughs> 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 um, and and uh, she says, well, uh, do you have some time I could tell you? And, and you know, I'm like, you know, I got five minutes, right? You know, I, you know, I got five minutes for you. Um, and so I hear blah, 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 blah. And then I was born and she says the date that she was born on. And I said, what date? And, <laughs> and I get emotional. And, and then in, in five minutes, I try to tell my life story in you know, five minutes about you know, why everything happened and what happened and, and why and, and all the things that happened afterwards and, and so on and so forth. And, um, and you know, I'm babbling, babbling, babbling. Who knows what I said? Um, and, and then I stopped myself and I said, you've probably been thinking about this for a while. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop and, and let you talk. And she said, I wrote you a letter. <laughs> I, and she said, I wrote you a letter. I could read it if you'd like. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and, and so, so we talked, you know, I, I kind of asked her um, when she knew that she was adopted and she said when she was six and she saw the movie Annie and she said she finally had a word. She finally had a word because she kind of knew these weren't her people, but, but she, she didn't have a have a word for it, right? And so, so uh, we we talk, and and I said, um, "Can I meet you?" And she said, "Yes." She sometimes there's no excuse for me. Um, she said, "Tell me where you are, and I'll fly down." And I said, "Tell me where you are, and I'll drive up." <laughs> like, like, <laughs> Like I right. drive up, like like, like, like right now. <laughs> you know, you know, you know. Well, well, you know, because you know, it's cheaper to drive than it is to fly, right? Um, and and um, I said, you know, so you know, it was a Thursday, and I said, so what are you doing tomorrow night? And she was like, she has, you know, she had this plan, and I said, well, what are you doing on Saturday? And she's, you know, she has this plan, and and I said, well, what are you doing tonight for dinner? And 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 basically, she said, um, you know. The exact wording is a little bit, right? but I'm having it with you. We actually met, um, 
She lives about eight hours from me. You know, I had a meeting. I had a I had to do something. So um, and she had to wait for for her daughter to 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 come home um, and and organize this stuff. But but so so we met at at nine thirty um, in the uh, in the hotel uh, in 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 the city. That was about four hours from from place to place. Um, she got to the hotel before me. Um, so when I when I got to the hotel, I I, I uh, told her I was here, and she met me in the hallway. And um, so you know, I was you know I was 50, 59, 57. You know, in 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 fifty years, I've hugged a lot of people. Right, I I've, I've hugged a lot of people in in that time, but when we got into the hall, and I hugged her, my knees literally buckled. I, I couldn't stand. I, I knew her. She, when I touched her, I was touching my baby. You know, um, I knew her. My body was connected. Um, it, you know, it's, it really is kind of crazy. The, but it was, it was that primal, right? It was, it was that mother child touch, right? There's, there's nothing like it. And we talked and talked and talked, right? And so this is Thursday, Thursday night. And I said, um, I could drive up north, right? I, right, right. I, I could, I could follow you and we could have the weekend together. And she was like, no, I got, I got stuff to do. Um, um, Thursday, you know, we're, you know, we have, we have two separate hotel rooms. So Thursday, um, we're, 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 we're in her room and we're talking and we're talking and, and it was just kind of amazing. And, and, and um, she said, yeah, I got, I got to go to sleep. And I said, you can go to sleep and I'll just sit here and watch you. And she's like, uh, no, you won't. <laughs> you know, I just, I just wanted to watch her sleep, right? I just wanted to watch her sleep. And she was like, no, you, you, you. <laughs> that's a, that's a, you know. um, and, and, and so, you know, we, you know, I went to my room and, and then, uh, and then the next morning at breakfast, I, you know, I said again, I could come up. Um, and, and she said, okay. So, so I went up, we had the weekend together. Um, now, uh, it, it just so happens, she lives a half an hour away from my sister, um, 45 minutes away from my stepdaughter. Uh, and um, my aunt uh, lived, uh, you know, a half an hour away also. Uh, it just so happened that my father, right? My father was back to the area, right? Back to the area um, um, for for a wedding. So he was up there that weekend. So um, so Friday morning um, we 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 drive up, um, and you know she's got to do something Friday night. Um, but then on Saturday. You know, so I saw her Friday during the day, right? And then Friday night she has her event, and and I spend the night at my stepdaughter's house. Um, but then on Saturday, right? On Saturday, um, I, I go to my daughter's house, um, and um, my sister um, comes um, and and meets. Uh, and then on Sunday, um, my father, we go to my aunt's house. Um, and, and, and my father and my stepmother, um, my aunt and my sister and, and I think her husband um, uh, were there then. Um, mm. and, and so, you know, it was, it was one of my top 10, <laughs> one of my top 10 things is, is um, what does it mean to go slow, right? You know, they talk about going slow. I, I think that there were a lot of mistakes and, and we can talk about that if you want to. Um, there were there were a lot of mistakes, but I, I don't understand how I couldn't have come running when she called. 
such such a great story and but i think we should talk about the troubles and the secrecy Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i think that's really important because in the beginning most of the complications come thereafter (laughs) so So, you know expanding on that Lindsay, that'd be great so the the secrecy is is crazy right the secrecy is crazy um uh, uh, my whole life um, after my first daughter was born, um, she was mentioned in the family three times, right? Um, there, were, there were three times. Um, one, when it was, why, why aren't you over this yet? Or you, you're so quiet, you know, <laughs> right? Um, and, then, and then the other time, we, we don't have enough time to talk about it all. Uh, um, but my brother, I have a younger brother, about seven years old, younger than me. So, so he was like seven. Now I went away. I, I started off the conversation to my brother saying, did you know that when I was 15, I had a baby? That's the level of secrecy. My brother, I wasn't sure if my brother knew that I had had, a, I mean, that's how crazy, that's how crazy of a secret it is. Um, and, and, and he said, well, I, I thought so. And then one time I was, I was drunk with, with cousin and, and he was like, yeah, <laughs> and, you know, you know and, and so, so I had said something when I was, you know, when I was drunk. And so I was like, yeah, I thought so. Um, but that's the level of secrecy. Now I had told my husband, um, beforehand before I married him, but, but nobody else, nobody else. I, no, nobody else. So you had I, to hold. You just had to hold the weight of that. Yeah, you know, it's just. You know, I I I like to, and and I'm really annoyed that other people have also come up with the same analogies that I did because I thought I was so smart with these analogies, but to find out that other people talk about it also, but but you know, I used to say it was like I lost a leg. You know, mm-hmm. I, I lost a leg, but I had a prosthetic. And I put pants on, so nobody saw that I had a prosthetic. And I worked that prosthetic. You know, I'm, you know, I, you know, I'm an educated woman, kind of dealing. And 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 I worked that. I worked that leg. I worked that prosthetic. Like you just a door. Hit, hit the pain. But but at night, I had to take my pants off. Yeah. She was always there. Whenever I stopped, she was always there. Great way to explain it. Yeah. Um, now to, to go to the troubles. And so, so yeah, like, like anybody who's been in a union, uh, you know, they, they, they don't call it the roller coaster for nothing, right? They don't call it the roller coaster for nothing. And oh, we've had a, we've had a roller coaster and, and, and I, you know, I, I jokingly refer to it as, as the troubles. Um, and for those who, who, who know a little bit about the Irish history, the troubles were the, the kind of the civil war in, in, uh, in, in Ireland. It wasn't really a civil war, but it was the North and the South and they were fighting one another and Belfast was bur- burning and Bono was writing, writing Sunday, bloody Sunday. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but the, they, they, just, they just call it the troubles now, right? They just call it the troubles. It's just, you know, it's, it's, it, it's not that bad. It's just, it's just, it's just the troubles that, you know, um, the, some people, some people talk about, you know, you, they would hear the story and they say, oh, it's like a Hallmark movie, right? It's like a Hallmark movie. But you know, in the middle of the Hallmark movie, there's always a plane crash. And so the troubles are the, are the plane crash. Um, but I will say, um, no matter how hot that plane burned, I would take the reunion over the knot any day, any day of the week. And, and also, again, when I'm, when I'm lucid, we have to go through the troubles because my daughter needs to know that I never left. And no matter what happens, I'm showing up. I, I am, uh, my line is, you know, I'm, I'm playing all nine innings. And if I have to do a seven game series, I'm doing a seven game series. I'm just here. I'm just here. And, and if we can't withstand the fire, 
then then it's not real. But that fire is hot. The fire is hot. We've never not been in contact, right? I mean, we're not. You know, in the beginning, it's 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 amazing. And 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 you know, uh, can we pause for one second, right? So like I I I, I can I can. But I'm I'm worried. You know, I'm not sure if this is telling too much or not. Um, and so you you tell me and whatnot. But you know, I I I adopted my daughter. Her 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 adoptive parents are are, are both deceased, right? Um, her her mother her adoptive mother died when she was nine. It was really kind of a terrible terrible story. And and I and and I I don't. So you legally I, adopted. Her. I I I, I yeah. legally I legally adopted her back, and and I wrote a letter to the uh, the clerk of the court, and and I said that I wanted to right a wrong. I wanted to right a wrong and that I wanted to be, I, I said something along the line of, I am her, her mother and I wanna be legally recognized as her, as her mother. Something along the line of, you know, I am her mother, but legally I'm not recognized. And I wanna be recognized as her, her mother and her as my daughter, mm. you know, so. So we, wow. um, you know, so so we went from that to, you know, to the troubles. And, and to the troubles, and and you know, I, there were a tremendous amount of mistakes that I made early in the reunion, right? Uh, it was when I when I when I touched her, you know, I was I was that fifteen year old that just wanted to hold her baby, right? I just wanted to hold her. I never wanted to let her go. I just, I just wanted to be there, right? Mm -hmm. right so I might have been a little bit overpowered. <laughs> maybe, maybe just well, and that's <laughs> fair, you know. I, I think maybe just a little bit. Yeah. You know, Amy, I don't know how you felt, but when I first met my my own birth mother, I was very guarded. I, I didn't know all the details yet, and. I, I was protecting my own heart. And I think when adoptees put up the wall, it's just, it's really just about fear and, and protection and not wanting to lose again the, the person that they longed, longed for. Amy, what was your experience? Were you feeling wide open? I was very excited, but again, the first meeting I was like, not, I mean, I guess apprehensive in a way, cause right, you, you're so excited in the moment that you have this opportunity that you're not, you never thought you would have um, kind of soaked it in, but I think it just kind of went away that day. So it was almost like down the road when we had continued our relationship and, and started really building it is when that hug became like such a strong, like, I, I can't even explain it, you know, just that electricity. And it was funny. I remember one time, after we were saying our goodbyes and she gave me a hug and they laughed and my husband said, I've never seen anyone hug you like that. That was a mother's hug. And it was like, it was the feeling and it was amazing that he was able to see that because that's exactly what I felt. I was like, I don't want this to ever end. Like I just want to hold her. I want her to hold me. And it was just amazing. It's just, it's just so beautiful. And I know as we wrap up the interview, I think it's really important, vitally important, because we've heard so many adoptee stories where there isn't a mother that is um, able or maybe passionate enough or they are re-rejected. These are some of the realities that, that happen. And when you open that door to reunion, you don't know what you're going to to get. But one of the things you said, Lindsay, that really stood out, it's kind of like you have to, I guess if you want healing, facing the truth, no matter what, it, it's really important, I feel, in, in this scenario. So how would you advise people that are listening? And we hope it's adopted parents, of course, adopted people, and of course, first mothers in uh, and I know that's a really big ask to ask you to, to consolidate all of that, but maybe just some heartfelt thoughts toward each party 
because I think each party is vulnerable. Each party is being taken advantage of in some way. So, so, so um, let me start with adoptive parents first. Great. Okay. Now, and, and for those who are thinking, right, about a, a, adoption, they should keep their name. You should allow your child, you, you, the child that you are adopting should be able to keep the name that they were given. Mm -hmm. When we were, when we got reunited, we didn't talk about this much, but I got back my identity. I always knew I was a mother of three and I could finally claim that, mm -hmm. right? I could finally claim my true self. My daughter lost herself, I think. And, and I never spoke to her about this. And, and so I, 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 you know, I, I'm, I'm hoping I'm not putting words in anybody's mouth or anything, but, but I was finally able to be who I knew I was supposed to be when she came into reunion. I don't know that that's, that ha she has the same kind of reaction. We all, you know, I'm, you know, uh, I'm, we all know the ghost kingdom, right? You know, so she had to give that up, right? Mm -hmm. She had to, she had to give that up. Um, she's not, you know, X, Y, or Z. Um, but if you, if you allow individuals to keep their name, at least you're allowing them to keep some of their identity. Right mm -hmm. to 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 at least be able to keep their their identity, and and unfortunately, society thinks that we can we can take the person from this family and just transport them into that family, and they're gonna fit. Right, like like they'll just they'll just blend in. Well, you know, again, I'm not talking. I'm not telling you what you don't know what you inherently don't know, you can, you can fit in, but you don't maybe belong. You can fit into lots of places, but, but do you really make that connection? And, and, and I think that if adoptive parents kind of understand those challenges, um, understanding that children need to know who they are so they can grow into the people they're supposed to be. Um, standing ovation thank you um and 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 then how do you do that right they'll support the mothers and then the mothers will take care of their children um but but there'll be times right that there'll, there'll be times when when a when a mother can't take a, care of a child and of and course. it would be it would be like you know if i had gangrene in one of my fingers right or gangrene in my arm you'd cut my arm off to save my life you cut my arm off but you wouldn't pretend that I didn't need the arm. You, you wouldn't pretend that, oh, it was to the best anyhow. You, you really had ugly nails. So, you know, we got rid of it all. You would, you would deal with the issue. And so, so adoptive parents need to deal with the issue. They just can't pretend it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. to, to mothers, um, what do I want to say? is the pain of separation um, and the pain of reunion, you, you can't avoid them, yeah. right? You can't, you can't avoid it and, 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 it, and it hurts and, it, and it's deep and I've, I've been on the floor in my office with my door locked, crying under my desk, 59, 60, on the floor, under my desk, crying. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if you can see that. I don't think, well, yeah, I, 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 you see those two little dots there? I do. Those are, those are teeth marks because I gnawed on myself because it was, I, I know what else. I, because I didn't know what else to do. But, right. but, the, but, the, 
but the pain was devastating. Devastating. Just came over me. It was, it, I, you know, I, it wasn't like I said, oh, I think I'm going to bite myself. It, it, it just was, it, it was like I was like an animal in a trap and I was just gnawing at myself. So for other mothers, you have to face that, right? Because when I was early in my reunion, I didn't face it. And I would shut down and I wasn't able to be there for my daughter because I was dealing with my own pain. And so she would say X, Y, or Z. And, and, and I, you know, I had already shut down, right? I, 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 I wasn't able to be there for her because I was dealing with my own pain. And, and so um, the only way that you can help your child is kind of by helping yourself. Right, you have to be able to to be strong enough, right, to yeah. do it one more time. Um, so true. But, but that's what mothers do for their children. That's right. That's what mothers do for their children, and that's what they have to do with it. Mm -hmm. um, now to adoptees. Um, the first thing that I had on my list, it was going to be. Um, it was going to be a response to you if you had kind of <laughs> right, right, like like her father issues, right, right, mm -hmm. and 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 what I was going to say was out of respect to my daughter, I'm not going to talk about that, um, yeah. but but my daughter may not have been conceived in love, but she was the mo she was loved the moment. She was conceived. You, the child, you did nothing. I was taken advantage of. I was manipulated. I was controlled. You were innocent. You were pure. When you feel that child move in you, it's amazing. You did nothing. There was nothing that you, these decisions were made before you were born. How could you have done anything? It, it really, it really, hurts my soul to hear people say, well, why didn't you want me? Why did you leave me? I you think there are me. so many of us, including myself, that you can just never hear that enough. Um, I think psychologically, it's really hard to feel worthy of existence at times as an adopted person and I'm just so grateful to you for your incredible honesty and truth telling and you won't be the only one balled up crying tonight <laughs> and, I, and I just thank you for that because it's hard it's hard to sit here and face all this and face it all together when we all have this personal connection but Ladies, this has been a tremendous hour and a half, and I just thank you both. And Amy, I'm so grateful to you, too, for being here with me, um, co-piloting. It was so nice to have your presence and your support. And, and Liz, it was just, it was a gift to me, too, and your, and your Brooklyn accent. I just can't <laughs> get enough of it. I can hear it on my answer. And, and I know we could talk for, for days and days, yeah. but... I've got to go like drown myself in ice cream or something right now. I don't know. <laughs>